I've recently done a few trade shows where I've talked to people about batteries, of course, for my job. But you also end up talking about things like solar panels and heat pumps. And the one thing that I've gleaned from a lot of these conversations, because they, they kind of tend to go together, if people get solar, they look at a battery or vice versa and a heat pump as well. It, they kind of, again, all fit. And there's still a huge amount of either old information or just misinformation out there or half truths regarding these things, heat pumps. So I thought it's time to do another update in terms of if you're thinking about getting one, because they don't suit every house, I'm not pretending they do. If you don't want one, that's fine, just don't get one. But if you are thinking about getting one, again, from, from the people that I spoke to that were genuinely interested in them, there's, a, there's things we need to clarify, I think the best phrase would be. So uh, that's what this video is about, essentially. That and me asking you to like and subscribe and all that crap sort of thing, you know, that people do all the time. Please. Whilst I'm outside, I might as well start with the obvious thing, noise, or at least people's perception that these things are really loud. They're not at all. In fact, the only thing I can hear is, well, a guy two streets away cutting his lawn, the trees blowing in the wind, and just general noise, nature. Can you hear it if you stick your ear next to it? Just about. I mean, look, the microphone is literally next to it, and I bet you can't hear anything other than the noise of nature. And just to show it is on, I'll get some weeds. It's, it's running right now. Now that's not to say that they're silent because they're not. If we go to the worst case scenario, so let's say it's minus 10 degrees centigrade, it's winter, our bedroom's just up there. The fan, again, not a problem, but they have a compressor in them. And that's the only thing that I ever hear. So it's kind of like a, like, like almost like a, a more basic fly, if you, <laughs> if you will. The only time I can hear this at its worst is if I wake up at three, four in the morning, it's deadly quiet because we live quite rurally and you just latch onto a noise. Again, it's like a, a slight hum. So is it silent? No, especially for a month or so in the worst, coldest months. But our gas boiler was on the other side of that wall. So same wall, just on the other side. And again, our bedroom's up there. That was louder. Gas boilers are not quiet. I think this is something that the heat pump hating brigade constantly forget when we mention noise. Gas boilers aren't silent. I could hear the gas boiler, the combi one that we had, a lot more than this. So again, this isn't silent, but it is quieter than what we replaced it with. Now I want to talk about the physical installation of these things. So this is what you've probably seen on the channel before. It's called a uni tower and it's a product that Valent do, which is like a, an easy installation option for their products. So you don't need something like this, which is like a fridge freezer sort of size. You don't have to think, where can I put this in my house? It's too big. From about there, I think it is, down is the hot water tank. And then up here, and back there you've got all the other gubbins like your heat exchangers and things like that. So it's essentially just a, a compact unit that is designed to look nice in the corner of a utility room or something like that. And we have space so I decided to go for the easy installation. It's literally just like one pipe in, one pipe out. It's very straightforward. So if you don't have space for something like this, there are other options out there. You can put the water tank somewhere else in the house, you can put all the other gubbins wherever your installer gives you the options for. It doesn't have to be something like this. I grew up with houses for years with airing cupboards, which is where you had your hot water and hot water tanks in the loft. There's all sorts of options. Not all houses suit a heat pump. It's, 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 no one's pretending they can. You do need to find space somewhere. But as someone that I talked to recently has found out, you get in space back sometimes. They have their gas boiler in their kitchen that's now going to be more kitchen cupboards or whatever they want. So it's a trade-off. Gas boilers take up room, these take up room. The only real difference is that you've got the water tank to go somewhere. A lot of houses already had that. It's just been removed in recent times and now it's going back. So we're kind of going full circle almost. Whilst I'm here, let's talk about temperatures. Again, this is something that crops up an awful lot. 
So my hot water tank is in here. And I often get asked, well, what about the immersion heater that it's got inside? And this does, I think it's a six kilowatt immersion heater. That has been disabled since installation. It will never be turned on because I, I don't want something just to run at, at best 100% efficiency. I want the heat pump to fill the hot water up. And then it comes to, well, how hot can these things go to? Well, I think mine tops out and it's a typical heat pump by today's standards. So pretty much anything you're likely to get installed in the UK should or will likely match this. I think mine tops out at 72 degrees centigrade. No one's going to need that. I mean, gas boiler is probably set to what? Maybe 60 if you do the Legionella thing for your water. 50 maybe for your radiator. So the fact it can go way past anything that any gas boiler is likely set at means that yes, a heat pump can heat any house. Even the leaky, badly insulated ones. Can't talk. I was talking to Glyn at a trade show recently, fully charged, about uh, the open energy monitor that he does. He's got, I think, a Welsh cottage, solid walls, heat pump. It's fine, it works fine. So to answer the question of can a heat pump heat any house? Yes, it can. However, the hotter you go, the less efficient it will run. It's more of a case of, does it make sense to go to that level? Is it going to be efficient enough to make sense for that property? So I choose to have a lower temperature in my radiators because I want it to be as efficient as possible. It's not a case of, it can't do the high temperatures, I choose not to. And that's the big difference. Right, so let's assume that the outside temperature is five degrees centigrade. Let's also assume that I'm asking the heat pump to heat my radiators up to 40 degrees centigrade. So there's a difference of 35. Now, if I thought, well, you know what, I'll have smaller radiators and just put the temperature higher. So let's say 50 degrees. There's now a bigger difference between the outside temperature and the temperature I'm calling for. And it would be the same if I went up to a very, very hot and borderline dangerous probably if you touched it on a radiator, 60 degrees centigrade. So again, the difference all of a sudden is 55 degrees. So the heat pump will have to work a lot harder to get up here because of the gap between the two than it would between these. So the smaller that gap between the outside temperature and the temperature you're asking the heat pump to generate, well, the more efficient it will run, which is why the bigger the radiator, the lower temperature you can have them but it output the same amount of heat. So therefore, this is why you always constantly hear people like myself saying, oh, I've lowered the temperature or I'm running them at 35 degrees C or 40 or 45. Also why underfloor heating is better suited to a heat pump because essentially underfloor heating is just one massive radiator. So therefore the temperature can be lower and it can still output the same amount of heat as a small radiator, but at a higher temperature, if this all makes sense. So do you need underfloor heating? Do you need massive radiators? No, but the lower the temperature, the more efficient it will run. And the outside temperature essentially is very simplistically here. This is, this is not a technical thing at all, but that is one big determining factor of efficiency. And again, efficiency means lower running costs, lower running costs mean, well, you're saving more money. So that's why you're always constantly hearing people saying, I need it to be even lower. I, I don't want to go above 40 degrees centigrade. It's not because it can't, it's because you don't want it to be. Because again, saving money. Oh, before I go any further, all here whiteboard of truth. As we're back down here, let's talk about the consumption of the heat pump. So I have a five kilowatt heat pump. I could have got a, I think it starts at 3.5, seven, nine, 11, and you know, 16, the go to whatever size you need up to commercial levels. But essentially I have a five kilowatt heat pump. That is how much heat it can output, not how much electricity they consume. So I think the highest rated consumption, according to the manual of my heat pump, which it has never come close to using, is 2.6 kilowatts. So that's the maximum it can draw. The most I've ever seen it at, I think it was minus 15 degrees centigrade outside which for the UK is extremely cold and quite rare. I think it was about 1.7, 1.8 kilowatts. That's the worst I've seen it. And that leads me to something else. They do not stay on all the time. 
So what will happen typically in the comments will someone go, okay, 1.7 kilowatts on a really cold day times 24 hours, that means I'm gonna use, no, it's not like that at all. It will pulse, it will, it will move up and down in terms of its consumption to match what is required. If it thinks it needs more heat, it will turn the heat pump on. If it thinks it needs a little bit of heat, it will turn the heat pump on, but use less electric. So mine, I think right now is using 300 watt, 400 watts. Let me show you a screenshot as an example. So on the I don't know, 17th of December, I'll pick that and film it after I've done this. This is what it used in terms of electrical consumption on that day. So it goes up and down. They are not on or off. It's not like a kettle or a three bar fire where it uses this much or nothing at all. It, well, it modulates itself depending on what it needs to do. I think two, 250, 350 watts is like its minimum and then it can go all the way up to kind of past two kilowatts for my specific heat pump. Just as a point of reference, if you want more details on how much I used in winter, how much I used in summer, over an entire year, there are videos in my channel that answer all these questions in greater detail. So please go and watch that. I will put a link to them in the description below. If I forget, please do remind me. But effectively, that's an entire video's topic. So I don't want to go into too much depth in this one. It's all answered in there. So to summarize, a heat pump will work in any property, assuming it can physically fit anyway. But it doesn't mean it's suitable for that financially. That's the only real challenge here. Does it make sense financially? It's what people tend to care about the most. It will be more efficient than a gas boiler by a huge margin, typically. And it will probably save you money if it's installed correctly, and especially if you pair it up with a home battery system or something like that, where you can take advantage of a nighttime tariff. And to anyone out there that says they don't work in winter, I mean, is this still around? Is it still a thing, really? Yeah. Oh, if I had a pound for every person I spoke to that said that to me online, you know, you have to tell the Norwegians and the Swedes who predominantly use heat pumps and yet it's a far colder country than this, whether heat pumps can work or not. I'll end on the microbore thing. I'm not a heating engineer. Heat geeks, you know, installers, they need to answer this in detail. But ultimately, I know a lot of people with microbore and heat pumps. They can work with microbore. It will be less efficient than if you had, you know, 15 mil pipes, for example, instead of the 10 mil, but they can absolutely work. The, the newer generation of heat pumps are far better, far more effective. They're more efficient. They, they, they won't be affected in the same way as maybe they would have been 10, 15, 20 years ago. And remember, heat pumps are not new. I think people see them as, oh, I'll give them a bit of time to develop. It's a fridge. Literally, the thing that the fridge uses takes heat out of the fridge and dumps it into your kitchen. It's the same thing, it's just in reverse. They've been around for decades as a heating system, let alone as fridges. I save money with my heat pump, predominantly because I have a home battery system. So they charge up at night along with a heat pump and they then power the house using that cheap nighttime electricity through the day, typically through most of winter as well. But if I didn't have any battery, no solar panels, it was just a straight swap from the gas boiler combi to the heat pump, then it will cost me about the same. So financially, that might not make sense to you because you're thinking, well, electricity is more expensive, but the heat pump's more efficient. So therefore the actual kilowatt hour cost that I'm paying, you know, per kilowatt hour of heat, it's about the same. But if the heat pump's a lot more expensive, then it don't really make sense to me. That's, that's perfectly valid. But if you had something like this, which people get independent of heat pumps, then all of a sudden you can take advantage of that. And it, it genuinely saves me, I think, what was it? Five, 600 pounds a year having the heat pump compared to the gas boiler because of these. But that's for a different story. And again, in the channel are the full installation costs for me, the details, the, the, the savings. So thank you for watching. Please do become a member. It's 99p a month. You can cancel at any time. For some stupid reason, Apple still don't let you do it on an iOS device. You're gonna to have to do it on a Windows or an Android device and click the join button. Once you're a member, then you can see all the members only videos on an iOS device though. It's just a bit faffy, it's just Apple being Apple. Uh, if not, please subscribe, like, and all that sort of stuff because any interaction with any channel means that the YouTube algorithm tends to push it more on other people. So if you do like this video, if you do like any other YouTube channels you watch, that's why people ask you to comment and like and subscribe because that the more interaction, the better. 
So thanks if you do that. Um, thanks if you don't, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I'll see you soon. It's one of those videos where I didn't really know how to end it.